Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, I was asked to share some of um, our research findings linked to what was said so far this morning. And first of all, um, research definitely agrees with what uh, the commissioner said this morning in the first presentation. First, school leadership plays an important role in securing and improving the quality of education for all our children, for the children and the youth, for the students in the schools. We have a lot of empirical findings in various uh, countries and also international comparative findings who prove that, that school leadership plays an important role. So that obviously puts some emphasis on policy level, uh, on human resource management in the education systems. Second, she says, and uh, I would definitely agree with that, that school leadership um, plays an important role within the organization and also beyond the organization. And um, we call it um, system leadership. And we see many findings of very good schools uh, where schools are networked with other schools where, what Michael Schwartz said, they have integrated professional learning community, but not only with professionals within, but across different schools and also across other education services. We did some studies on that and we do um, nine projects in Switzerland. It's called Networked Learning Systems in Switzerland. And we see that this is a, a very strong leverage for improving the quality of education for all, and I emphasize for all, because not all parents help their children to find education offers. Laptop is one example, Michael Stadt showed that, uh, but there are also other um, findings, like um, all the social uh, services, football clubs, and so on. Yeah, so um, to network also within education, social, Michael Schatz also pointed to cultural, and the schooling seems to be very important. The commissioner also pointed very rightly to human resource management. We see that knowing the first two things, um, we have a, a complex situation for policy making, because obviously, if you think of professionalization and improving the quality of professionals, as uh, the Minister of Liechtenstein refers to that, she said, um, we have teachers uh, in schools, and you see this a very poor uh, performing uh, classroom, poor performing children, and you put in a very good teacher, it improves the academic outcomes of these children, and hopefully, as to the presentation of Michael Schatz, also the social um, 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 achievements. Uh, we did a project with the OECD, Beatrice Bon, I don't know whether she's already here. So we looked at very good schools in England, and the finding was very clear. To get academic outcomes, you have to look at the social and emotional aspects of the children. And if you refer to John Hattie's studies, with Michel, uh, Michael referred to, then it's absolutely the, the relationship which gets generated over time between the teacher and the pupils. So, for policy level, that means uh, quite a lot in recruiting, in selecting, in preparing, in reducting, and continuous professional development of all professionals, and that they have a clear understanding of all the different professions and all the different aspects and roles within the system. So, if you look at challenges for school leadership, and I was asked to uh, look at that, then obviously we have the challenges of education. Unemployment was one aspect we heard this morning. There are other uh, aspects as well. So actually we have the challenges of society uh, we have to look at. But then there are uh, challenges in particular on school leadership. Um, and we know quite a lot of school leadership. And I think we just did a meta study of what actually have effective school leaders in common. And if you look at that, then I think all these aspects good school leaders have in common is a challenge for the majority of school leaders. First of all, to fulfill this demanding function. That's a challenge because they are in complex uh, school situations. They obviously have far too much to do. So they have to set priorities. So they need to have an understanding 
what is most important in this unique organization to be prioritized. So um, they can deal with complexity. So in terms of human resource management strategies and selecting or attracting first of all, attracting, selecting, uh, this means how do you do that on policy level? How do you find people who can deal with complexity and are good in strategic thinking and strategic behavior and performance? They are good in developing. They are um, never alone, so they are very good in shared leadership. They share, they delegate, not only tasks, but also responsibilities. So they generate partners and foster and promote cooperation within the organization and beyond the organization. They are good pedagogues. We have many findings that good school leaders are good pedagogues, that they can actually what the Minister of Liechtenstein refers to a new with toxic quality management. They can talk to principals about educational issues. And they are legitimized to do that because they're principals, but they also get um, the credibility. They, they, they are, um, how you say, they are acknowledged. Yeah? Um, that means for teacher observation, they have to see good teaching and differentiate bad teaching, and they have to find differentiated aspects how to promote the teaching. So, but we also know that a good teacher is not necessarily a good principal. So that's a very bad strategy to pick the principals by good teachers. Because often you lose a good uh, teacher and have not necessarily gained a good principal. So you need different strategies. The commissioner also referred to leadership. But what we see in our findings of good school leadership, they are good managers, as well as good pedagogues. They're good managers. They organize their schools. And then there are three personal aspects. They consider cost-benefit ratio. They show integrity and fairness and trust and confidence. So these are aspects. We did a study with 10,000 principals, 50% response rate, so about 5,000 principals in Germany, Liechtenstein, Switzerland, responded. And we asked, what do you like in your profession? And what do you experience as burden? And the minister, you referred to uh, quality management. And that's what they don't like. And that's what they experience as burden. They also experience as burden all the administrative tasks, statistics, and so on. What they like is what you referred to, leadership. Talking about um, problems, um, dealing with people inside and outside. When we look at um, another study, we did um, um, end of day long with 900 principals over three weeks, five weeks a day, uh, a week. In the first week they said we forgot Saturday and Sunday because they were actually seven days a week. So we had 21 days. And when we analyze 21 days of 900 principles, what we see, what they do most is not leadership and it's not quality management. What they do most is what they actually don't like and experience as burden is the administrative task. So that also puts some emphasis on what actually human resource management is about, how you select and also how you prepare them. In attracting, and it's my last point, we did a study with three um, states and they had the problem of lacking principles. Too few teachers um, applied for principal positions. And they did a self-assessment with teachers and a preparational course. And by doing that, they increased the application rates by one third. But unfortunately, not one third for the principal position, but one third more by other positions within the education system. So by preparing teachers for leadership position, by, by preparation, they not necessarily achieved that teachers immediately wanted to become principals, but they got an understanding of taking on responsibility as being in a cadre group, a steering group, a vice principal, and so they could increase the number of people taking on leadership positions in general. 
And my last point, and then I'm finished with this uh, comment. We look so often on very good schools. The last three weeks, I conducted 100 interviews with teachers, parents, pupils, and um, principals, parents I said, in schools in difficult circumstances. We have a study where, in which we look at failing schools, in which the Liechtenstein um, minister said there's a teacher with bad performing pupils, and we looked at these schools. And obviously I don't have the lessons learned yet, but yesterday we had a workshop, what we saw in these 10 schools. And obviously it was um, very difficult pupils. We, had, we saw very poor teaching. Uh, we saw schools with di dysfunctional relationships. The teacher hated each other. I never saw something like that in my whole life. I'm, I'm really still shocked from these three weeks in schools in these kind of difficult circumstances. But we also saw a lot of potential. But what we also saw in all schools, very bad leadership. And I would actually say it's very difficult to think of a causal relationship. But if leadership would have been in place taking more the quality management perspective, then they would have not allowed this kind of struggle and this kind of history of four or five years struggling. And so maybe we also not only thinking of best practice and promising practice, but also to help low and really bad performing teachers and schools to improve for the sake of our pupils. Because what do pupils in these schools gain over this couple of years? So thank you very much for my comments and listening to my comments.